Um, back then, like when gang, like Gangster Girls, the hottest shit, right? Could a label pay you to do it? Like, like let's say it was an artist that was you didn't know about. Mm-hmm. Could they cut a- the, the stimulus check? <laughs> Most definitely, <laughs> and they did plenty of times. What's, but you, what, what, you got to think too. At the time, I mean, it may be a little different now, but even there are artists like Yo Gotti's an example of that. Like the first tape we did together, he paid me, and he was he had just got signed. So these are still artists that are like you know we know of today. You know right. what I'm saying? That the labels were still cutting checks for. So it would it would it would vary. Like they would come from all avenues. What was you about to ask though? What, no, I was gonna say what what was the biggest uh what, like what's the be- like what was the the going rate? Um, it, it got up to like. 25 30 thousand damn like a tape man yeah, it was crazy yeah and then like so give me like so like so, so something like the little brother gangster grills right which was so dope because one of my little brothers obviously from the south right but they kind of you know it's crazy because back then i feel like we really separated types of hip-hop 100 percent so much more than we do now yeah they told me it wasn't gonna make sense when i did that tape. like now like people can work with each other mm-hmm. And people don't even bat an eye at it. Back mm-hmm. then, like yep. I like remember like how how crazy it was like when you heard Talib Kweli yep. and Jay Z on a song 100%. together. Absolutely. Like, and so you do a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. Ka- yeah. Kanye had a lot to do with it, but yeah. you doing the Gangster Girls with Little Brother. Right. Was that your idea? Was that the label coming well, in? No, nah, that had nothing. That was me and Little Brother. I mean, I was I had been a fan. Like, I'm we're hip hop heads too. So, you know, what I'm saying I've been a, a Little Brother fan, and when I remember we wound up. We ran into each other. They had a show at Yin Yang Cafe here in Atlanta, and I went to go see him. And we we talked about it on the bus. And, and it's be, looking back on it, like again, Little Brother tape and the Pharrell tape. Like when I Ooh, did that those tape tapes, crazy. like though at the time, Gangster Grills was still known for like T I G Z Wayne mm-hmm. Bun B. So yeah. it was a, it had a certain you know style to it, or it was like street music. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. I remember people being like, you going to do a Gangster Rose with who? Little Brother, Pharrell? And I was like, watch this. And, you know, like, even for me, like, that was getting back to my roots to be able to do something with them. You know what I'm saying? So they, they, you know, them being a fan and me being a fan, it was like, it was, it was perfect. Like, I was so excited to do those tapes, too, to really just start branching out and going different directions, too, with the brand. Yeah, and then, like, how many, like, so, okay, like, you mentioned the um the Pharrell tape, which is fucking so fire! Cannon actually ghost DJ that whole tape. <laughs> oh, you did? Okay, okay. Ghost DJ. But yeah. I'm just curious. Like <laughs> he, was, he was on the road. Like, did you kind of like DJ. questionable uh, questionable turntables? Turn yeah. <laughs> I have you, questionable turntables. Yeah. You and uh, Pharrell, like you decided to do a gangster grills. Does he just handle all the creative, or are you sending him ideas, um, beats? It was both. We're sending him ideas and beats, and um, he was he had a phenomenal. Uh, uh, outline of where he wanted to go with it he definitely picked some incredible beats and we gave him some and um you know and i what i used to do is i used to write out a script i used to have a script and it basically was like literally like me interviewing the artist and that would kind of give me a, a formula for the tape so you know that's when i used to do interludes mm-hmm. and yeah. talk and chop it up you know just kind of piecing those stuff that stuff together like um so so yeah i mean and again you know i met i met pharrell when tip was on house arrest um like before we did down with the king so we had we had gotten acquainted then you know so he was familiar with me early on in my like in that part of my career so then you know he kind of touched back and was like yo i I love what you're doing like we got to do one i mean to this day it's the only mixtape he's ever done you know and it's just you know us being fans like it was monumental like and no that's a that's a tape too like you know i meet a lot of kids today and not even kids anymore but you know they'll be like yo that pharrell gang like the same way, like a, the Jeezy and a Wayne tape is to mm. to some, that's how you know a, a different uh, cloth is to the to the Pharrell tape per se. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, all classics. We got nothing but fucking classics under our belts. <laughs> Talk that shit, bro. Talk your shit. Talk that shit. Uh, that's oh crazy. man, a lot of them.